Hi, everybody. My name is Jose Vigeta from Avalanche Software, uh, one of the makers of the Hogwarts Legacy game. I'm coming here to tell you a little bit about uh, the inside look at the Hogwarts Legacy and how we extended the Unreal Engine. Uh, we are a studio based in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, we are, uh, shipped the Hogwarts Legacy in multiple platforms. In light of your unique situation, joining us as a fifth year, We've devised something extraordinary to ensure your success. A lot to absorb on your first day. Can't believe I'm here. Professor Weasley has asked that your professors give you instruction outside of the ordinary curriculum. You have much to learn. You have the benefit of an exceptionally skilled team of witches and wizards to guide you. Let me a surprised opponent is a weak opponent. They will test your abilities, both innate and learned. You've done it! I am wary of how much time the new fifth year seems to be spending away from the castle. No need for theatrics. I'm only here for this one anyway. What do they want with a Hogwarts student? I have a rare ability to see whispers of ancient magic. Extraordinary. It's a powerful magic that should only be wielded by a select few. The path we're on is terribly dangerous. But I do not know where it leads. Let's even her out, shall we? We leave our legacy in your hands. So uh, there's a couple of presentations that we did on a real fest last year uh, that I think it will be worth for you guys to check it out. Again, my name is Jose Vigeta. We presented uh, the Unreal Fest 2023. Uh, we did a, an inside look at developing the cross-platform open world uh, in Unreal Engine uh, by Rob Nelson and myself and Eric Brown that is in the audience over here. He did the extending of the Unreal Engine to create a story text. So if you want to go deep dive on the uh, Horace Legacy, it's a great place to check it out. A uh, quick uh, info about our game uh, is uh, we developed this from the PC. Uh, we did a Steam, Steam Deck, Epic Game Store build. Uh, we also shipped it on PS5, Xbox Series X, and X. We also uh, developed it for the PS4 and Xbox One. And then uh, we shipped it on Nintendo Switch. It's an action RPG single player game, uh, five years of development, and it localized around 14 languages. So one of the first advice I have is about how do you go about to make an Unreal game engine? So, uh, game. So the best advice is first find the real way, embrace the real way, find out how uh, they do the uh, all the data tables, how they do the actors. Look at the editor tools and workflows. Um, we use world composition, landscape tools. We use Niagara, as you can see from all those pictures over here. All the VFX were done by Niagara for spells and emergent magic. We use chaos physics for destruction, ragdoll and cloth, and I'll show a little bit of that later on. And then we have extensive platform support, but there are times where you have to extend the Unreal Engine. So here's some few of the extensions that we did. Uh, we use Python uh, validation tools to validate the assets from textures to static meshes. We develop our own quest editor, and we'll show that a little bit. Character creator, and then a physics scene viewer, master tick throttle, a skin effect system, and a render visualizer debugging modes, and story tech editor tools, story graph and scenery. And I will show some examples of those as well. We have an animation architect, and then we leverage the SQLite database. So here's uh, the first one we're going to talk about is a mission tech. So we have two major things that we did. is a mission quest editor plugin. It's an extension of the real engine. And then we did also an automation for daily captures. 
So in here, we're going to play it out the life of an admission designer at Avalanche. So in this case, he loads the game, he's playing the editor, he's going to try to uh, kick off a mission that he's working on, he's already loaded the whole environment, he decides now to, to launch the, the quest editor. The quest editor is accessible from the Windows uh, section, and then now you get exposed to the whole system. In here, you will see a variety of missions, he's trying to find his mission, the mission is a Fig01, it's a Professor Fig, that is the main uh, professor on the storyline. And then in here, you can start going through all your tasks. You can set up checkpoints. You can actually find the, the character that you want to bring in. In this case, he's trying to set up uh, a fig into our game. He now is, is trying to set up a scheduling. You can schedule any way you want it. You know, if he needs to approach you to the office, whatever it might be. And then not only that, then you can say, okay, well, I'm going to be working on a, on a subsection of the mission. So he can jumpstart the level in whatever place he wants. And all this is being powered by a SQL-like database. So as he is making any of these changes, then he can actually uh, write to database. So he hit play mission, and now he jumps into the game exactly where he needs to be, and now he's gonna play and then see how it goes. So in this case, he's gonna uh, approach the, the start of his mission that is uh, meet Professor Fig at his office. So he, he approaches the mission marker and then interacts. Ah, there you are. Hello, sir. You'll be pleased to know that I worked on my defensive magic with Professor Hecate. So I hear. She tells me you've taken rather well to your new wand. You must continue to work with her and your other professors to improve your skills. That said, I don't wish to postpone our visit to the library any longer. So, shall we proceed? Fig! I have work for you. Come. Headmaster, I'm with a student and my schedule Your schedule will wait indefinitely, as will your student. I would think that after all the trouble you caused me with Osric, you'd be eager to make amends. My office, five minutes. That man is exasperating. Unfortunately, our trip to the restricted section will have to wait a bit longer. But Professor... We have no choice. It would be unwise to provoke our illustrious headmaster further. I shall find you when I've completed whatever toils I must endure. So at this point, uh, the player gets control. Uh, you know, in this case, he already had the cinematic, the conversation, the setup. Now um, the mission designer wants to move to the next step. So instead of being able to play through the whole process, he decides to teleport the player. He moves himself to whatever the location, as you can notice, we're playing the editor. We have not left the editor at all. We interacted with all the assets loaded, all our environments being loaded uh, behind the scenes, and then he can just finish the, the mission. And in this case, he need to meet Sebastian Salo, the NPC, and then he stops. The other area that we did a, a mission is called the automation for daily captures. In this one, what we did is we did the continuous execution of the whole missions that you saw there, and we capture them and render them in 4K and upload it to our tracking software on Shagrid. That allows us to do dailies, and with these dailies, we're able to give feedback from the players. So it's a great way to just uh, a big game like ours that has hundreds of hours of, of gameplay. You can capture the whole game and all the missions, and people get feedback on it. Now, switching gears a little bit to the character tech. So this is one of the areas that we spend the most. We move ourselves to Chaos Physics. We use the cloth for all our robe um, uh, and all our kind of our cloth and, and ragdoll and destruction in the game. But in the case of uh, the characters, we wanted to create a plugin that we can customize our character creator. In this case, also, we did a physics sim viewer. So let's go into deep into one of those uh, plugins. So here's a customizable character creator. Um, this is a plugin uh, that you can add on your own game site. It's not added on the engine, so it's an expansion of the, of the game by adding this plugin without a need to change the engine directly. And here you can see a variety of characters that, that we had in the game, from NPCs to any other uh, professor or your avatar. So as we go through here, you will notice that we're going to do a lot of uh, testing over here. You can actually load in the character. You can change the background. In this case, we want to test how the ropes on uh, the physics work. So you can see that he moved from idle to sprint and run. You can change and do multi-region material parameters. I can change the silk component of the tie. I can change the color if I wanted to. And then you can really customize however you want. So this is the main tool, not as an avatar creator, but for a character creator. And here we're going to change some region presets where I can change the row materials. I can change a different swatches, and then I can pick whatever I want, and then I make it available for the character. 
you know, in this case, now we're going to switch to now to localize audio in here. I think that now might be a good time to head back to the castle. So in this case, what that happened there is you can actually view all, all your localization. Now we move into gear creation. Here you can actually change and test all your gears. So you can change your mask that you get on the game. You can see your cloth. You can see um, you know, your scarf, whatever you might be needing. And, and it's all running at, uh, at real time with the physics in enable. So you can see how well it behaves on it. So this is a good way for us to be able to see the different uh, dynamics. And in this case, we have capes, we have robes, so a variety of uh, cloth pieces that were needed. And then you can turn on the different animations and see how well it behaves at different speeds. So now switching gears a little bit, we did uh, take a, a, the cloth. Uh, not only was important, but it will be important to know how it behaves in different mounts and brooms. So we built this physics sim viewer. Primarily what it does is allows you to to not only ch uh, change your outfit and put whatever you, outfit you want, you can change the wind direction, you can change the speed and, um, of, the, of the wind and see how well the robe is holding up. In the case this is a standing uh, test, we're gonna change the direction and then change the speed. As you can see, the direction of the wind is coming from northwest, and then we see how well the, the simulation is holding up. We have all the visualizers to make sure that the physics asset was built right. And then you can move the directions and then show your sim cloth as well. So that's a simulated sim cloth that is driving the rendable uh, piece behind it. Now, this is a great uh, holodeck where you can just not only see um, the, the physics at work, but you can also see it at the different avatar mechanics. You, know, you can just go and see you jumping on ledges, climbing, climbing ladders. So you can really exploit and see how well the, the physics are holding up. All right? So it's a good way to make sure that it's battle tested, the physics, and to see if we have any adjustments that needs to be done to the physics assets. Now, not only we have to deal with a character in a standing position, but we also have to uh, handle it with running and walking or whatever it might be. But in our game, we have more than just a, a player on the, uh, running around, like, like you will see here. We have also have uh, uh, brooms and mounts, and we'll show you in a second right now. So you can actually jump in your broom, and we have a special system where we keep the cloth really well protected around the broom with no interpenetrations going into the, on it. So you can mount and dismount. We also have a, a ground mount. So he's, uh, riding, she's riding now the grab horn. It's one of our mounts that we have, and you can just walk around with it and see how well the, the physics asset is actually uh, being behaving on the back of the grab horn on it. And you can see how it jumps off and comes out. But not only the mounts on the ground, we have mounts that you can actually fly as well. So not only you can just walk it, but then what happens when you take off? So we want to make sure that the physics are still holding up. Now you're going to have larger wind speeds, uh, different directions of, of, of the wind conditions. So we want to make sure that the, all the cloth pieces that the player can uh, get dressed, that it looks right. And then not only uh, during flight, but also on the ground, and we come in and out of mount and dismount out of it. So it was a very important tool that we needed to make sure that the physics assets look correctly on it. And now it's just dismounting, and then you're good to go. Now switching gears a little bit to the Cinematic Story Tech team on it, um, we did a bunch of uh, stuff on it. Uh, we, uh, we went a little extra mile over here. We tried to do a lot of performance capture. We did a conversation system as a whole branching conversation system. We use Odyssey to, to do all the branching conversation, but we also have story graph and scenery plugins. So we're gonna go over that in right now. Uh, here's a, a video I'm gonna be playing of all the different parts that we use our so story tech. So you saw that there was a bunch of different type of cinematic storytelling elements. 
our asset pipeline is uh, we do performance capture, you know, PCAP, and we do a uh, Vicon full body. Or we use Maya and run real for live preview. We use all the classic DCC apps you guys are familiar with, Maya, Motion Builder, ZBrush, Houdini, Speech Graphics for all procedure generated on it. We did a, a, a Team City Farm, uh, is our build farm on it. We use Perforce and then we use the Unreal Engine 427 Chaos on it and with the Houdini engine. And for production tracking, we had ShotGrid and Jira software. And here's just a, an example of our, some of our mocap. Uh, as you can imagine, you know, we have all these different kind of uh, creatures and um, enemies that we need to make sure that it works. We have all these wow moments or funny moments in the game that we want to bring that ambience level on it. So we have to make sure that we mocap not only for for our, our game and an avatar, but also for the different NPCs on it. So we can see a live preview of, um, of our mocap on the set, and we can actually adjust the performance. And they have different props. This is on, on broom flight, and this will drive directly our game. Now switching a little bit to two plugins that we extended. It's probably one of the, the best uh, plugins that we added on it. One is we call it Story Graph. Um, our game is all about storytelling. So we developed this uh, plugin called Storygraph, and you can see from the uh, on it, you have a variety of elements. You have the script, you have the details panel, and you have a timeline on it. So I will play a little video here to show uh, data in action. So we have a graph navigation on the, on the middle section where you can actually see the, your branching conversation. You can see your script on the right-hand side. So as you um, navigate the graph, you can actually move around the script. And it's very helpful for the either designers or the, the story team. The story team can actually do script variations and you can modify right here on the story graph. So these are very helpful for the story team. Now we have a bottom one, we have a timeline. That timeline is a relative timeline. It's a very important thing that we did to make sure that we can adjust it, procedurally generated cinematics and adjust the time without worrying about being an absolute time. And that's one of the reasons why we built this special timeline widget on it. We can all, uh, select and edit the script dialogue and adjust accordingly our, our procedural generated. So this is a very high level plugin to handle the mission um, uh, story graphs. Sebastian, don't think I've forgotten about your goblin friend. I haven't. But I appreciate you setting our earlier discussion aside for now. Of course. I can't believe my uncle wants to leave Feldcroft. Anne's going to stall him. She must. We need time. Time? For what? I've learned more about the relic. I cross-referenced Slytherin's spellbook with everything in the library on relics and dark sacrifices. That's when I realized something. I believe the relic will only work inside the catacomb. So now moving to the scenery. So now this is a more low-level plugin now. Same concept behind it that we have the same kind of setup. We have detail panel, the timeline, and we have the uh, viewport and then the game, uh, game port as well. Here's a video showing in action. So we have editor viewport on the left hand side. We have the gameplay preview on the middle one. And we have the object selection via viewport or an, uh, the outliner. So we have an outliner on the right hand side. And we have the same relative timeline on the bottom uh, on it. You can expand it out. You have nested actions. You can see the different animations. You can see the different facial body uh, combination of things. So this is kind of the workhorse on it. But let's say if you want to put in an element in the middle and you want to modify it, you can actually adjust the whole timeline. You can say, OK, I need to wait for the player to interact. You can modify the timeline, and it automatically will move accordingly. So it's very important because it allows to really be more um, dynamic and interactive with the player. And then you can, of course, play it. You will see it on the Action. on the preview on it. And then you see also, of course, the setup on the left will be the game, uh, the viewport. You can see how elements were placed, lighting, and whatever else you might need. Um, and this is it for us. Thank you very much.